joined by Alabama a head coach Connell Maynard. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Coach Maynard, as always, appreciate you taking some time out of your schedule to join us. If you could, please start us out with an opening statement regarding your team's most recent outing versus Jackson State. Yeah, we went down to Mobile, played in the Gulf Coast Challenge, and um, uh, it was a great atmosphere. The, the um, Gulf Coast Challenge did a great job of presenting and putting on and taking care of both teams. And um, it was a good football game. Uh, we got off to a good start. We was up three zip and uh, I had a chance to up that lead and uh, we dropped a snap on uh, the extra point and uh, they blocked it. Uh, and it kind of stayed that way for a while. And then um, it was, um, they scored maybe seven to three. Uh, then we scored maybe 10 to seven. Um, and it stayed that way until middle of the second quarter and they, they scored again, made it 14 to 10. And we got the ball back and uh, got stopped. They got it back with maybe 30 seconds or 40 seconds. And uh, it was, four, it was uh, 10 seconds left in the half from the 40 yard line. And they were able to get behind our defense some kind of way and score a touchdown with uh, just 10 seconds on the clock when the play started. So that was a big play in the game. It, Pushed the score be 21 to 10 going into halftime instead of 14 to 10 at halftime. Um, so we was playing hard, playing well, uh, just made a couple mistakes early. And then in the third quarter, they came out and scored the first possession and uh, made it 28 to 10. And then we scored a field goal and uh, we was able to stop them from scoring the rest of the way. Uh, and we had a lot of chances, we had a lot of opportunities. Um, and we just didn't cash in on them. Uh, to make it a one-possession game. and uh, We got stopped on downs one time, and we mis had miscued on a couple of passes in the end zone. So uh, the defense played great, gave us opportunities, and uh, we just didn't take advantage of it. Appreciate those opening comments, Coach. First question goes to Dr. Cavill. This is Kenyatta, Dr. Cavill's inside the HBC Sports Lab. Good morning, Coach, man. Good morning, Doc. How you doing, Doing pretty well, doing pretty well. Got a chance to watch the game. So talk a little bit more. You said about the defense playing special teams in some areas were uh, good at, uh, also. But talk to the guys that stood out on the defensive side of the ball uh, that kept you in the game ways all the way through, giving you opportunities uh, to try to push through and make even more of it. Right. I thought the D-line played well. Zarian Hayes always lead, lead those guys. and. Um, uh, get pressure on uh, Shadur and uh, kind of containing the running game. Uh, the linebackers, Terry uh, and Hester, always played well. Um, and then secondary, uh, those guys was uh, making tackles and uh, not giving up big plays until, of course, right before the end of the half. So uh, they were doing the things that we needed to do. We were trying to confuse him, trying not to give him the short, easy throws. And uh, keep him off balance, put some pressure on him every now and then, uh, because he's too good of a quarterback to just sit back and uh, let him pick you apart. Uh, if you just give him a little short throw, he's gonna take it right now. And uh, we didn't want to just let him do that, uh, so we want to kind of force him to throw the ball down the field and, and run the ball. Your next matchup is against Texas Southern at home, uh, last home game for you, so you're seeing your night and that approach, but about your experience, obviously as a player, um, uh, winning championship uh, at the division two level as a coach, also at the uh, multiple conference experience. Talk to me a little bit about uh, the confidence of a team and how that works uh, as you kind of get rolling. You know, a lot of teams have good players, but to be able to put that together, what is your experience that really allows the team once they get the rolling, is uh, moving back and forth with players and everybody's on the same page to see on the outside a lot of times is that magic of a team feeling confident no matter 
that they're able to push forward. How does that come together from your experience looking at that? Um, it's really the key is uh, for those guys to believe. And uh, once the once the guys start believing, uh, it's it's hard to beat it's hard to beat a good football team that believes they're the best and believe they're gonna win the game uh, no matter what. Uh, keep fighting back, especially those teams you see that get down seven, they come right back and score and, and tie the game up or somebody score a touchdown and tie the game up them, they go right back down and score and take the lead back. Um, and, and it's all about confidence. It's all about believing. It's all about buying in. When you can get off to a good start, uh, 3-0, and 4-0, and 5-1, you get off to a start like that, your team is bought in. They listen to everything that you're telling them and trying to coach up and get them to do. And uh, because they believe now, because they they see that the, the uh, proof is in the pudding. So they buy in, they play harder. And um, that's how you get those good teams to continue to win because they believe they can win. And, uh, and this is the same with the teams that don't win. You know, as soon as they get down 10 points, they say, okay, here we go again. You know, but we don't, we, we, we start to do what we always do, you know, and, uh, and they start pointing fingers and things of that nature. So, it's all about your confidence, believing in, in your your system, your coaches, and your teammates. And when they do that, when they believe, uh, you know, you can do a lot of things. Like, you know, just take my team, for example, this week. We believed we was going to win the football game. We believed we could win the football game. And we went out and played that way. And we gave our chance. We gave ourselves a chance. You know, we gave our t- opportunity. We need one more score to really make it a one-possession one game, but two two-possession game. And uh, – we, we really felt like we was going to score and cut it to one, and we, we thought we could win the football game, and the guys played like it. And so that's the difference. Thank you, Coach. Uh, Andrew, I have time for one follow-up question. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Uh, Coach Maynard, uh, follow-up question in, in terms of that is, uh, as you close up the season, when do you start reviewing everything in terms of, of how you plan to move forward with, with, the, with your program? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go back and self-scout and uh, see where we were strong, where we was weak, what we need to prove at, what what positions. And then um, uh, we'll hit the road and, and get those positions and get those spots filled and we understand what we need to work on uh, and what positions, what we need people at. And so when we go out there quarterback, we go out there, do we go out there, we know we need a guy that can throw the ball or maybe a guy that's a little bit better runner or offensive lineman. Um, you know, do we need the guard position? Do we need the tackle position? Secondary, same thing. Do we need a safety that's going to hit? We can move this guy to the corner, uh, things of that nature. So we just self-evaluate positions and uh, uh, what we did this year, and we're going to attack our weaknesses. Thank you, Coach. Yes, Good sir. luck this weekend. Look forward yep. to the match. Thank you. This is Charles Bishop. Good morning, Coach Murray. How are you doing? Good morning, Charles. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I wanted to ask a quick question uh, in regards to the weather conditions down there in Mobile. Uh, did that affect play calling uh, in terms of the direction uh, that your offense uh, might have been going? Because it seemed as though uh, the wind had an effect on uh, on, on some passes. Uh, no, it was uh, – the wind was blowing pretty good um, from my right to left and their opposite left to right. So um, – no, the only thing it really affected is the kicking game. Um, you know, when you try to tip a field goal or kickoffs, you know, you can get it all the way in the end zone or out of the end zone and vice versa. And the punts, now the first thing I told the guys was on the punts, when they're punting it to that win, we have to be ready for a Peter call to get away from the ball because it's probably not going to be a good punt and it can easily hit off of you and they may be able to get the ball. So that was the first alert that I gave our guys when they're punting into that win, we have to be ready for that. But play call, it don't really affect the play call. The only thing you want to tell a quarterback in that situation, if the wind is blowing to your back, when you throw those balls out to the sideline, it's going to take it forward a little bit, whichever way it's blowing. It's going to move it a, ball, a yard or two. And I saw that happen a couple of times on uh, both quarterbacks. We're trying to throw the ball straight to the sideline, and the wind took it out in front of the guys. So that's that's it. It, it don't really change the play call. Good thing. Appreciate it, Coach. Yes, sir. Any final questions for Coach Maynard with Alabama a and Coach Maynard, as always, we appreciate your time. Look forward to speaking to you again next week. Thank you. Thank you.
We go to Alabama State. And Coach Eddie Robinson, Jr. I do see that we have Coach with us. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. How's it going? Doing great, Coach. And as always, we appreciate you taking some time out of your schedule to join us. Coach, if you could please start us out with an opening statement regarding your team's most recent outing versus Florida a &M. Yeah, we played at, at home. Uh, the Military Appreciation Day uh, Hall of Fame game had some greats like uh, Brad Baxter, Ricky Jones, those guys on campus. So uh, great atmosphere to have a college football game. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we lost 21-14. Uh, the game started off with uh, those guys driving down the field. They had a couple of um, you know, third and 15 conversions. Uh, quarterback Moose did a, did a great job of, uh, you know, stepping up and making the play, finding an open guy. Uh, so they took a 7-0 lead. You know, we came back, um, had a play that we had drawn up that worked for us, uh, tied the game up at 7, went into the halftime 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, both teams playing well. And uh, coming out in the second half, we just couldn't get the field position in our direction. Uh, was backed up on the one-yard line. Uh, defense played, did a great job, had a couple of red zone interceptions, but then, you know, uh, you're starting off at your own one or two. So they were able to get a safety on us, uh, try to have a, a pass play on the second and long, and uh, took a 9-7 lead. Uh, scores kind of went from there, and uh, we were able to block a punt, uh, kind of get us into it. The offense couldn't really get a rhythm in the second half, and, you know, when you're playing against a good defense, that has a lot to do with it. So, um, you know, those guys played good. You know, Land stepped up, made a couple of plays. So uh, their, their big play guys played well. Uh, but once we blocked that punt, um, Kale Jackson, who also had two interceptions on our safeties, uh, he also returned that punt for a touchdown, so that gave us a lead. Uh, you know, going into the fourth quarter, they were able to get a score and commit the two-point two point conversion. So it uh, ended up being a, a one-score game uh, in, into the fourth quarter. So uh, we tried to drive it, uh, couldn't get anything going, went for it on fourth down. Uh, they had a couple possessions uh, inside our red zone. Uh, we were able to stop them on fourth down, which gave us a uh, you know, a chance to, to come back, I think with about 30 seconds and three timeouts. Uh, you know, quarterback uh, Miles Crawley was in the game at that point. Uh, he was able to drive us down and get us in position to attempt a 51-yard field goal uh, that was blocked and they returned it for a touchdown, which made it a seven-point game. So really proud of the guys. Uh, uh, everybody played hard, competed uh, all the way to the last play. So, you know, whenever a game comes down to the last play of the game, then you're in it. Uh, you know, of course, we had mistakes. We could have played better, but uh, when you're playing a good team, they force you to make mistakes. And I thought uh, Coach Simmons had his guys uh, ready to play. They had a really good game plan. We knew that their big guy was uh, Xavier and tried to stop him, but I think he still had like 12 or 13 catches. So they have a couple guys that will be playing at the next level. So that, it was good to see a, uh, a good swag game with a, with a lot of players on both sides of the field that, that played really well. The big guys played hard on both sides of the ball. So uh, just a great game, even though we came out of it short. You know, um, and it was still a great game. And so it um, doesn't diminish anything from it. My kids play hard. So now we have to turn back around and get ready for the Turkey Day Classic. We'll play Arkansas Pine Bluff, kind of like a mini bye week. It won't be until Thanksgiving Day. And so we just want to uh, finish up the season on a good note. Appreciate those comments, Coach Robinson. First question goes to Dr. Cavill. Yes, Dr. Cavill is inside the HBC Sports Lab. Uh, as you really broke down the game, I had a chance to watch it. Um, fascinating in terms of just the back and forth, the nature of the game. Defensive struggle is a classic game, a SWAT game, if you would, uh, that you've seen over the many years. With that said, uh, can you talk a little bit about some of your defensive stands that, that kept you in this game in various capacities in terms of putting you in a position to potentially get out the victory? It wasn't a beat, but those defensive players really made sure that uh, they gave you every opportunity to be in it. Yeah, I mean, the offense was struggling. Uh, we, had, we had a good rhythm in the first half. Uh, second half, the offense couldn't really get it going. Uh, a lot of it was field position, just backed up, couldn't get the plays off. And, and it, we were playing against a good defense. So family has a really good defense. So that was part of it. Um, but but defensively, our guys, Bubba Adams, I mean, he another 14 or 15 tackle uh, performance from him. Uh, stayed in the backfield, made a lot of good plays. Uh, you know, he always is consistent. I think... Um, Another guy, uh, Urshaw. Urshaw played, um, you know, he's one of our All-American guys, played a lot of man coverage. Uh, they went at him a couple of times in the red zone. Uh, he's a smaller guy, but super tough, uh, great technique. So he was able to stand up to the occasion uh, on, on a couple, you know, one-on-one -on -one shots, say, your guy against my guy. So he did a great job. And then uh, Kale Jackson with the two interceptions. So uh, we was able to pick the ball off three times. Most of them were in the red zone. It was a big play. So. Uh, it seems like every time they're about to really take control of the game, we were able to get a big defensive stop. So 
uh, kudos to those guys. They, they really played hard. And, of course, Brandon Gaddy, our defensive tackle, he's, he's just probably been one of the best in the conference uh, the whole season long. Follow-up question, um, your next week, next game isn't until Turkey Day. Um, so you had an earlier season by where you evaluate and things of that nature. Uh, obviously, you can rest a little bit, get people healthier. But having this many buyers, you talked about it, what do you look at in terms of it this time? Is it about more uh, the natural component of wanting to get some players healed just because the physicality of the season? Or do you look at some other things in terms of this many buy? Well, I think the first thing for us is academics, academics, academics. Like Monday and Tuesday, uh, that was my stress to the guys. Is if you're behind in any subject, make sure you catch up. So that, that's what we're focusing on first and foremost. Uh, as we know, the semesters are ending a little bit earlier, right around Thanksgiving. So we're, we're focusing on that first. And then, of course, uh, making sure that everybody gets healthy. So it, it will be uh, you get a couple of days to kind of really get into it. Um, but, yeah, that's that's the biggest thing. Academics first trying to get everybody healed and healthy and get a good game plan for uh, Pine Bluff. Thank you, Coach. Look forward to the matchup Appreciate the following it. week. Question goes to Zach McKinnell. How you doing, Coach? Doing well. How's it going? Not too bad. So you guys are wrapping up your season next week, and um, you, you had a new quarterback this year, D. Davis, his first year starting for you guys. Can you talk a, a little bit about his development throughout the season and what you're expecting from him moving forward at Alabama State? Yeah, I mean, he got off to a, a good start in that first Howard game, and then uh, he got hurt against that Miles game. So that, that you know, when it's a shoulder separation and it's on your throwing shoulder, that sets you back. So, uh, you know, he, he's played good when he's been in there. He's, he's getting better each week. The Bethune-Cookman game, I felt like he really grew up in that game. Um, playing against FAMU at home, uh, you know, really good defense. Uh, uh, didn't play as well, but he still showed those signs that he can control and manage the offense. So, uh, got a little banged up towards the end of the game, so we had to pull him. But I think he'll, you know, he'll be back for next week as a minor deal. Uh, but I think uh, his, his best football is ahead of him. You know, he didn't get a spring. He didn't get here till the summer. So I think just having a spring here and just getting reps and reps and reps, and I think he's a he's a high rep guy. Once he sees it, the more he sees it, then that that natural ability just come out. So uh, he'll be a good one, but he's he's still working at it. He was still a freshman this year technically, so he's still learning the position. Thank you, Coach. Good luck this weekend. Absolutely, thanks. Time for a few more questions for Coach Robinson, with Alabama State. Any final questions for Coach? Coach Robinson, as always, we appreciate your time. I look forward to speaking. Good morning. Okay, there you go. Good morning, Coach. As always, Coach, thanks so much for taking some time to join us. Coach, if you could please start us out with an opening statement, recapping your team the most recent outing versus Bethune. It was a, good, it was a great ball game. Um, I thought Coach Sam did a great job bringing his guys in and and playing a playing a heck of a ball game um, on their behalf. I mean, they they were well prepared, and, and the things that we we brought to the table. Um, you know, a seesaw battle in the first half, first quarter, uh, second quarter we managed to score a touchdown. Uh, Javion Howard, um, twelve yard run, um, come back and get a field goal late in the second second quarter. Um, come out of halftime, um, they go up, they get a touchdown, uh, make it ten seven. Um, then they go up 14-10. Uh, uh, late in the fourth quarter, we get a pick six to go up 17-14. Uh, and um, defense came out and played a, played a, um, played a great ball game for us um, in terms of what they did. They, they were relentless. Uh, these guys played tough. They fought the whole game. Um, good competitive ball game. I thought that, that we competed uh, to the fullest, restrained ourselves. Uh, in terms of special teams, offense and defense. So great ball game. I thought that uh, Bethune Cookman came in and, and played a heck of a ball game. Great coaching Coach Sims down there, uh, bringing the group in on a, on a trip, um, you know, dodging the weather uh, down in Florida and uh, just getting here and being able to play a solid football game. It takes coaches to, to do that kind of stuff, to be able to, to, to get here early and get your team prepared to play a a full 60 minute ball game. So my hats off to Coach Coach Sam down there and uh, the job he's doing at Bethune Cookman. Your first question goes to Charles Bishop. Good morning, Coach McGarry. How are you doing? All right, good, good. 
Uh, congratulations on the win. Um, I wanted to ask, um, there was a huge disparity with regards to uh, run pass uh, in this game. And I wanted to ask with regards to your, your quarterbacks, uh, do you feel with uh, more game experience, um, more reps, if you will, uh, that that uh, opens it up a little bit more with regards to the passing game? Uh, I saw uh, Jarvin had 32 attempts this past uh, game for, for over 100 yards again, but does it change up uh, how you go about calling the game uh, going up against Jackson State? No, nah, we're we going to do what we've been doing. Uh, it don't change anything for us. Uh, we just got to just take care of what we're supposed to take care of. And if we do that, we'll be fine. I mean, got a young quarterback, a uh, high rep guy. You know, got to see a lot uh, in terms of what we do. Uh, but it don't change our play calling. It don't change anything to what we what we got to do in terms of getting prepared for, for a good ball team uh, in Jackson State. So um, we just continue to do what we do. We take care of all corn business. Um, mm -hmm. Handle ourselves first and, and just come out and play a solid football game. Um, obviously, a quick follow-up, going to be a, a raucous uh, environment down there in Warren this weekend. Uh, you throw the records out, but uh, just uh, knowing that uh, uh, Jarvin carries such a, a low with regards to the offense, uh, does it uh, maybe change things up well with, with regards to Jackson State's rush defense, how they're able to uh, have been a tremendous uh, rushing defense this past season? Does it, uh, I guess, put more emphasis in regards to the passing game? No, they rush. We got we got to block. We got to block mm -hmm. them. So we don't change anything. We we just gotta just gotta take care of uh, up front. Uh, we gotta block the guys. I mean, there's no different than the other team we've been playing um, in terms of that. I thought Bethune Cookman uh, did a good job against uh, against us in the rushing. Uh, they did some things that that we had to make adjustments to. So as well. So uh, just looking at just looking at Jackson on film. Um, you know they 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 gonna um, they gonna they gonna stop the run. Uh, try to anyway. Uh, so the things we got to do is to make sure we we doing a great job of of blocking the guys we need to block to to open gaps up. Um, just in regular for normal game, it's no different. Sure thing. Appreciate it, coach. This question goes to Zach McKinnell. How you doing, coach? Yeah. So your your front seven's played excellent this season, led led by Terrence and some of the other guys. Can you speak to some of to their development and their performance this year and how important it is going to be to get pressure on Shador this this weekend? I mean, the guys, the defense has been playing relentless, man. They, they've been doing a good job. I think Coach Bradley and uh, um, Coach Rob Robeson have been doing a great job with the front seven, you know, and turning what we got to do to get to the quarterback, you know. Um, got to stop the run. Um, got to stop the, the pass that he throws. So we just got to put pressure on them, you know, um, to, to kind of offset some of the things that they've been doing so well. Getting the ball out of his hand quick, so um, you know they got a very good pass. They'll, they'll run it too as well. So we we just got to be ready for for everything, all phases of it, in terms of uh, stopping the run and stopping uh, the quarterback from passing the ball. You know, so uh, we just got to compete just like we do every week. You know, these guys work very hard through the week to get prepared for a game. So uh, no different than others. You know, uh, other teams had good throwing quarterbacks, had good running quarterbacks uh, as well. So we just kind of. Come on, and just take care of our business first. Like I said, you know, uh, we just got to work hard through the week and make preparation to to play a good solid football game. Thank you, Coach, and good luck this weekend. Next question goes. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Doing good. Awesome. Hey, Coach. Um, going into this week, how do you prepare for a guy like Travis Hunter who can attack you on both sides of the ball? <laughs> pretty much just like we prepare every week, man. We just got to um, be ready to play, you know. Um, you know, he does a lot of things um, in terms of what he do. Um, pound for pound, he's a great athlete, you know, so uh, you can't knock that. You know, great recruit they brought in there at Jackson. So, um, you know, we just got to prepare like we've been preparing every week. Uh, we have guys we have to stop every week. So uh, in terms of that, so it's no different than, than preparing for any other, you know. We got – we got to run our routes. Um, we got to cover the guys. There's no difference. So, I mean, uh, we just got to prepare ourselves to play a, a 60 minute ball game. As I said, you know, it's, it's no different than any other team we've been playing. I mean, it's, everybody got players. Everybody. I mean, this conference has, has grown to, 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 to attract uh, great athletes in this conference. So, uh, each and every team has gotten better through the course of the year. So, um, you know, preparing for, for one guy. You know, we got to prepare for them all. So it's no difference. 
Thank you, Coach. Coach, um, I did want to get your, your thoughts on philosophy about um, either building through recruiting or building through the transfer portal. Everybody has a different philosophy of how they recruit players, man. You know, it's it's about it's about things. Uh, it's about stuff. Um, it's about things that you have in terms of recruiting. You know, the young kids coming out these days, they want to see stuff. They want a visual. Uh, they want to see what you got. They want to um, get an understanding of, of your philosophy of in recruiting in terms of um, what you have here on campus, um, things of that nature. You know, so recruiting I always stay the same format for me, you know. I want the great. I want the, the elite high school players to come in and and compete. You know, um, it's always good to get a player out of the transfer portal. Uh, it just depends on the character of the young man. You know, so uh, we don't want to bring just anybody into this program. Um, you know, that way, you know, it's better to get an understanding and, and let these coaches build relationships uh, with these young men uh, and we recruit them uh, to this great university we have here. So we don't just dip and dab. Uh, throughout the transfer portal, and you find one guy that's, uh, that's not fit for the rooms down here um, in terms of old position. But you know, we got to recruit the best players to come here at Alcorn State University. Also, the players that really want to be here, uh, regardless of um, the things that they see and the things that they don't see. Uh, we don't have the the the, the, the big likes um, as other places do. You know, we we here on a, on a rural area and here in northern Mississippi. Um, and it's not a big, big attraction, uh, but we have a beautiful campus and we can show them that. We have a great coaching staff um, and the things that we got here at Alcorn State University. So um, it's always good to compete in recruiting. So um, Alcorn State University football program will continue to recruit the best players we can. We may not get them all, um, but we're going to recruit as we, are, as we normally do. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate you. Last question goes to Dr. Cavill. This is Kenyatta, Dr. Bills, inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Coach McNair, you're pretty straight in terms of uh, just the football, the ups and downs, the flows, calm demeanor uh, in terms of that nature in your team oftentimes <laughs> plays to that, of always trying to find a way to push through. But with that said, um, is it just getting prepared for the next game, um, about doing the things that you do well, looking at where maybe you can take advantage of the matchups, or is there any indication that's saying, hey, we're still in this in terms of divisional races if some things fall our way? What is your approach in terms of that outside noise that talks about that versus what's true to your football team and your philosophy? Uh, and these, these, these players, uh, these players, they listen to, they listen to one voice and um, mm -hmm. that's the voice of this coaching staff, you know, uh, and what we're instilling in young men is to, to come out and compete and work hard each and every day. Um, to make themselves better uh, in terms of uh, playing, uh, preparing for a football game um, in those situations. Um, you know, our guys going to compete each and every day. So um, it's no other different than, than last Saturday and this coming Saturday's coming up. So uh, this mm -hmm. week we're going to prepare uh, these guys to play a good football team coming in. Um, the outside noise, um, they, they, they listen to one voice and that's the voice of this coaching staff and, and they understand that the, this coaching staff uh, mean to more mean more to them than what's on the outside. Uh, just that room that we have, you know, I, I get them to understand that that um, this is the, this is the room that we created. Uh, this is the room that that, that that best for you, you know. So, in terms of that, you know, being young men is gonna compete each and every day, and you know, every, you know, just gotta find out the things that we can do um, best and. Um, and things that we can get better from, you know, in terms of uh, preparing for this ball game, um, trying to explore some of the weaknesses that they have, um, you know, just looking at film um, and just getting a good game plan together to, to execute and uh, score touchdowns and get a good game plan for the defense to, uh, to, to create turnovers and, uh, and not let them score. So uh, it's a tough task for us, special team wise. We got to prepare. They got a lot of speed. So uh, we just got to make sure we're doing the right things to put our guys in the best situation to win a ball game. Thank you, Coach McNair. Look forward to the matchup. Good luck this weekend, and thank you again for your camp. Appreciate you guys. Coach McNair, as always, we appreciate your time. Look forward to speaking to you again next week. Yes, sir. Thank you. Next, we go to Bethune Cookman and head coach Terry Sims. I do see that we have Coach with us. Morning, Coach. Good morning. 
Coach Sims, as always, we appreciate you. Take some time over your schedule to join us. If you could please start us out with an opening statement, recapping your team's most recent outing versus off point State. I thought it was a good football game. Um, when, when you you look at the, the course of the game, the, the flow of the game, I thought the, the first, you know, quarter was back and forth. Uh, good physical football game. Uh, had a, you know, to fight the weather a little bit. Both teams, you know, I think were, were was affected a little bit by the weather, but um, not a bad football game. We had uh, two turnovers that really cost us at, 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 you know, really, really crucial times in the game. Uh, we had one where we returned, we recovered a fumble, picked it up and fumbled it back to them. That was the third turnover. So I, I think when you look at the, the turnover ratio, uh, we end up losing that by one and we end up losing the football game by three points. But uh, all in all, did not think it was a bad football game. I think it was the best football game that our defense has played all year. Uh, you know, holding uh, a running back of, of the caliber of their back uh, to as few yards as we did, uh, not allowing him to just have a field day. I thought it was great. You know, so not disappointed in our guys' effort and, and trying. Disappointed in, in a couple of the penalties we had. Uh, I think each team had six penalties. Two of our penalties were personal fouls that, that really hurt us at key points in the game. But, uh, you know, I, as you look at the football game as a whole, uh, I thought it was a well-played game aside from the three turnovers and, and, and you know, the, obviously the, the personal fouls. Um, that's the thing that really hurt us. Got to take your hat off to Alcorn State. Uh, Coach McNair and, and his staff, they had those guys ready to play. Um, they came out and they didn't do uh, anything other than what you saw them do on film. And they do what they do well. He had them prepared. They came out. They never panicked. They, they just kept the course. And that's what good football teams do. Uh, and and he, he has to be proud and, and pleased with his group because they never quit. I don't think either team quit. Uh, I think, you know, when you look at the battle, it was a battle for four quarters, and it went down to five minutes left in the football game uh, for the deciding uh, pick six. So, again, you, you have to take your hat off to those guys, and Alcorn State has to know that they have a coach that's, that's doing the right thing, and he's preparing those guys the right way and, and keep getting them in position to compete week in and week out. Appreciate those comments, Coach Sims. First question goes to Dr. Cabell. This is Kenny Yada with Dr. Bills inside the HBC Sports Lab. Good morning, Coach Sam. Good morning. Talk about the, the nature of football in terms of young men uh, as you broke down the game there uh, in terms of that, but all the ups and downs of the season, particularly of what you all threw Cookman Wildcat, uh, out, things outside of your control in terms of the hurricane, the challenge associated with still keeping people together to play uh, in a position where you're in a game to even win it uh, over the last couple of games this season? Well, you know, Doc, you've been knowing me for a while. We're not going to use that as an excuse. It is what it is. Uh, we're in position to win the football game. Uh, we had to leave here on uh, what, Wednesday, and we, we got a chance to, you know, pull up into Jackson. We couldn't fly out. We had to bus to uh, Jackson, where our hotel was, and we got there about 12.30 a.m. Uh, and Jackson State and Coach Prime, his staff, they were gracious enough to allow us to practice uh, at their facility. We had our meals over at Jackson State. So definitely a big thank you to them for that. And we had to prepare ourselves to play a football game. It's not, you know, all the challenges you have, you know, in front of you. It's what you do with opportunity. And we had an opportunity to win the football game. We just have to cash in on. Next up is the big rival, there's Florida. Classic, another chance to win a football game, uh, but this one, uh, at least to a lot of fans, just a little bit more uh, because of the rivalry nature of it. Talk about uh, what do you want to get done in this football matchup? Well, I mean, it, I've been on both sides of this thing and, and being here 13 years, I've been here where, you know, both teams have been in the top of the conference. I've been here where we've been down and fam's been up and vice versa. You know, they've been up where they are now. We, we're down. Uh, but the, the Florida Classic is a little bit different, and you can throw the record out the window uh, when, when you play this football game because you're, you're talking about two teams who have been battling for years. 
Uh, we pull for each other. We're there for each other every other week of the season, uh, except this one. And it's always a great battle. It's always a great football game. Uh, I think two great coaching staffs, uh, you know, two teams full of great athletes, very prepared athletes, very talented athletes. So it's another opportunity for our kids to put themselves on a national stage and showcase their, their talents. No doubt. Look forward to the matchup. Thanks, Coach Sam. Good luck. Dude. Thank you. Thanks. Next question goes to G. Thomas. Hey, good morning, Coach Sims. Gerald Thomas from the Tallahassee Democrat. Tallahassee Democrat? I'm not supposed to be talking to you. No, go ahead. Bro. <laughs> uh, of course, Coach, you got the big game this week, the Florida Classic. Like I said, you've been at Bethune Cookman with 13, 14 years. So you've been through it all. You know, you got to start the Florida Classic, you know, as an assistant coach. You know, you went on a nine game winning streak against uh, FAMU as a, as a, you know, assistant and a head coach. Uh, but just tell me a little bit about. You know, just that luster of the Florida Classic, that rivalry, that FAMU versus Bethune Cookman rivalry, and just you know, what are you looking forward to come this weekend? Well, it's an atmosphere I think that's unmatched. When you you talk about the Florida Classic, when we pull up for pregame uh, and it's two hours early, the the streets are full, the parking lots are full, people are tailgating, fans from both universities are out supporting these these, these two football teams. So, the atmosphere is is unbelievable. And by the time you, you know, come in for pregame and you, you, you get back in the locker room and come back out for the game, the stadium's full. It's a lot of energy, a lot of electricity going in the stadium at that time. And it's something, you know, that I've been, a lot, been to a lot of classics, been involved in a lot of classics. This one is different because it's a homegrown uh, football game. And I'll go on record, I say it every year, uh, the Florida Classic is the only classic that's owned by the two universities. Uh, you know, that there is not a promoter involved. And we have sponsors, of course, but the two universities actually own this classic. And, and that's something that uh, two athletic directors way before my time, way before Coach Simmons' time, uh, they had a vision and they, they sat down and, and came up with it. And it's grown into what we know today as the Florida Classic, and, and you know, I, I again, I think it's unmatched. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Coach Sims, as always, we appreciate your time. Look forward to speaking to you again next week. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we go to Florida a &M head coach Lee Simmons. I do see we have. Good morning, Coach. Hey, good morning, everyone. Coach Simmons, as always, sir, we sincerely appreciate your time. If you could please start us out with an opening statement regarding your team's most re recent outing versus Alabama State. Uh, yeah, I did this on my earlier uh, call before I talk about last week's game. Definitely want to send um, our thoughts and prayers out to the Virginia uh, football family, the Virginia University family, uh, University of Virginia family. Um, tragic what happened there um, last night. And Tony Elliott's a great friend of mine, played college ball together. So um, keep things in perspective. You know, we talk about football and about the importance of the game, but, you know, things like this definitely put in perspective how valuable life is and the, the job we have every day to try to uh, keep these guys out of harm's way and, and, and make them successful men. So definitely want to um, continue to pray for the, for them. But, uh, you know, uh, Big win last week on the road, uh, another tough win against a, a good football team. Um, I took my hat to Coach Robinson, the job that he's done there, turning that program around um, in a short period of time. Um, came down to the end. Uh, we anticipated a six-minute ball game, and it was indeed that. Came down to the very last play. Uh, we didn't play our best football offensively in the special teams. Defense, we play lights out, which we have been for the last you know few weeks. Um, but, again, it was great to get out of there with a the tough win, keeps our – Win the streak alive, keeps our playoff aspirations alive. And obviously, um, we know this week is as big a week as ever. So looking forward to this week. Florida Classic is, in our opinion, the biggest game out there. Um, and records go out the window, um, everything out the window with this one because it, every year it's been a dog fight and we, we anticipate the same atmosphere this year. Appreciate those comments, Coach Simmons. First question goes to Zach McKinnell. How you doing, Coach? Congrats on the win this weekend. Thank you. The, the biggest thing when I went back and watched this game was how the defensive line consistently made big plays. Trey Jones, Isaiah Land, including the block field goal at the end. Can you speak about 
how they stepped up and it, it seemed to be all the biggest moments this weekend and really helped you guys pull out a big road victory this weekend. Yeah, you know, good football teams are built from the inside out. And that's what we've tried to do here. And uh, defensively, we've been able to do that. You know, we, we play really great defense up front for the last two years. You can think about guys like Isaiah Land, Savion Williams, General Hunt, um, now Dre Jones, Donald Hall, Kamari Stevens. Um, we really developed a, a deep core group of guys that, that understand that being good defensively, great defensively starts with them. And so they take great pride in it. Uh, they have an amazing coach, Milton Patterson does a wonderful job of getting those guys in position and works really well with, with um, our defensive coordinator, Ryan Smith, to, to scheme and game plan guys to take away their best things. And so we definitely got to continue to do that. We're going to face one of our toughest challenges of the year with the dual, true dual threat quarterback and, and, um, and Jalen Jones. Um, they have dynamic playmakers all across the board. And so we'll definitely have to play assignment football and uh, try to contain one of the best athletes you know, in our conference. And a quick follow-up, without looking too far ahead, a report came out yesterday that Florida A&M is getting together to potentially put in a bid to host an FCS playoff game if, if you guys get invited for the second year in a row. How big would that be in the first round to have a home game in Bragg Stadium? And how, and how does y'all's experience from last year carry over to this year and competing in that first round? Well, obviously, don't want to sound like coach speak, but but none of that matters if we don't take care of business this weekend. So, yeah, we'll we'll address that when the, when the appropriate time comes. But right now, our sole focus uh, is the Florida Classic. You know, we we going into this game two out of our three years as the favorites, and we're one and two, and so we can't get ahead of ourselves and think about anything other than winning this football game and preparing ourselves mentally and physically to go and play our best football. And so. You know, we do that, then obviously we'll have the playoff discussions on Sunday if indeed we're invited. But we know that that's probably out the window uh, if we don't take care of business this weekend. Absolutely, Coach. Thank you. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Next question goes to Dr. Cavill. This is uh, Dr. Cavill's inside the HBC Sports Lab. Just want to say before we get into the serious business, your shirt game, your pullover game continues to be uh, – uh, much like the way you coach your program. Thank you, Doc. I appreciate that. Well, just for you. No, Doc. <laughs> I think you did. You know how I am. And I did an academic conference, so it fits in with what I was trying to present. So I'm really feeling it. With that being said, more importantly, wanted to get to um, some of the key players in that game. Something just about Xavier Smith. We all understand his accolades, uh, what he comes to the table for. But the fact that people know uh, in terms of your opponents, but they just can't find a way to stop him. Um, uh, he put up 145 yards uh, on 13 receptions, 11.2, as you know, in terms of getting in the end zone as well. Can you break down a little more uh, in terms of what we may not be able to realize about what makes him more special than just all the things we've heard and know uh, his accolades? Well, one thing about Xavier is he's such a smart and savvy football player that we're able to use them in a myriad of ways, right? We try to line them up all over the field to prevent teams from just being able to say, okay, we can double 19. Um, because he plays inside and outside, it makes it really difficult to try to put two guys on him because it may throw off the structure of your defense coverage-wise. So because he's so versatile and because he knows our offense so well that we can put him anywhere, that makes him dangerous. You know, he, he has great speed, so when he's outside, he can run by guys. Um, he's very shifty, so when he's in the slot, he can win those matchups against linebackers, nickelbacks, and safeties, and, uh, and he's tough as, he's tough as nails, you know, so when you throw him a bubble screen, you know, he turns into a running back. He was a high school running back, and so he just brings mm -hmm. a unique skill set to the position, and uh, we try to utilize him in as many ways as possible, and again, I didn't even know he had 13 catches until after the game, but he's such an unselfish player. He never talks about catches or touches. He just goes and plays the game, so he'll be a vital part of this game last year, he kind of broke it open on his for on that touchdown reception and, um, after they scored and uh, got us back to a seven, seven game or seven, six game, but just his big playmaking ability has, has been on display for the last four years. And uh, this is our last regular season game with them. And we're, we're going to hopefully send them out the right way. What's the nature of a rivalry game uh, that just makes it a little more challenging than normal matchups where the teams win, lose over the years, your experience, what is it about it that we may not quite understand that just makes rivalry games tough? Well, I think in-state rivalries are, you know, kind of more so what we're talking about. And the fact that there's so many ties, right? A lot of these guys played high school ball together. Um, a lot of us as coaches know each other really well. Yeah. There's a, a great friend of mine 
Um, and so again, it's a game where you, you, you it's kind of like high school, so to speak. Everybody's kind of playing against the guy that you know, you know, really well, right? And so I think that lends to it. Uh, my families are tied. You know, a lot of families, you know, you, the spouses of one went to Bethune, one went to fam, church members, co-workers, you name it. Like this state, there's two prominent HBCUs in this state. They're four total, but they're two prominent ones, and that's FAMU and Bethune. So, you know, we're responsible for really transforming the, the black middle class in this state, right, these two institutions. And so much of what we do, we're so tied together. And so when we, when we come together on the field of competition, I mean, it's as big a rivalry as anybody because you got, you're talking about bragging rights, sometimes even in your own home, right? And so that's what makes this game what it is. And regardless of records, regardless of what anybody is in the season, this is always going to be, you know, one of the biggest games of, of either of our seasons, the biggest game of our seasons. And uh, both sides understand that. Thank you, Coach Simmons. Good luck this weekend. Look forward to the matchup. Thank you. Next question goes to Charles Bishop. Good morning, Coach Simmons. How you doing? Boy, they win the East, boy. They go ask the question again, boy, I tell you. Good to see you, Charles. Good to see you. Congratulations. <laughs> Coach, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the uh, the environment down there in Montgomery, our old SIC uh, rivalry with regards to Alabama State, but it looked like Rattler Nation was down there in droves. But uh, I just want to ask about this this budding rivalry and how the SWAC East is shaping up for years to come. Man, I tell you what, man, we knew it going into it, you know, that it was going to be a tough division. And this rivalry is one that's picking up steam. We're the closest two teams. Well, they're the closest team to us in proximity, even closer than, um, you know, our in-state rival. And so it, it's been a rivalry when they were members of the SIC, and it's turned into another rivalry as we speak. Two really good football teams, and Rattler Nation showed up. And I expect when, when they return the favor and come to, to Bragg next year, uh, Hornet Nation will show up in, in, show up in strong numbers. So um, excited about the future of this rivalry because it is indeed one between two really great programs, um, and, and it's going to continue to, to raise the profile of our division and our, and our conference overall. Sure thing. Appreciate that, Coach. Thank you, Charles. Next question goes to Jeff Lightsey. Hey, Coach Simmons. How's it going, Jeff Lightsey, Jr.? Hey, Jeff. So, Coach Simmons, we saw this week that uh, Isaiah Lang got an invite to the Senior Bowl. Just what does that mean for your program, and what do you think that means for the SWAC overall to have uh, a player get invited to that Senior Bowl prestigious All-Star game? Well, you know, he's not alone. I saw Aubrey Miller got an invite as well. And so, again, it just continues to speak to the level of talent in this conference. Um, Isaiah Lang's a phenomenal player. You know, he's, he's got two major All-Star game invites now, and um, he'll have his pick. But, um, again, he's a great player, but we also have great players throughout this conference. Uh, this game weekend is going to show a lot of star power. So just excited about the direction of the conference, the coaches, the players, uh, the communication departments. Uh, the SWAC is definitely on, on a meteoric rise, and uh, it's never been a better time to be a part of it. And last question, just a quick follow-up. Just your team you know, hasn't lost essentially since week two. Just what have you guys been able to do week in and week out just to continue to grind out and continue this winning streak? I'll just keep the main thing the main thing to so stay true to our core values and who we are. And uh, we do that. We feel everything else to take care of itself. So, you know, we try not to look at what happened yesterday, what's going to happen in the future. We're going to be where our feet are and just try to win today. And if we go 1-0 and today, um, we got a chance to go 1-0 and this weekend. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Coach Simmons, as always, we appreciate your time. Look forward to speaking to you again next week. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. See you guys next week. Thanks, Coach. Next, we go to Grambling State with Coach Hugh Jackson. Yes, sir. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Coach Jackson, as always, we sincerely appreciate you taking some time to join us. Coach, if you could please start us out with an opening statement regarding your team's most recent outing there versus Texas Southern. Well, I thought uh, we didn't play our best football. I think uh, our team, our staff, we're all disappointed that we didn't put our best foot forward. We've made so much progress over the last really five weeks. Uh, we think we took a little step back, uh, didn't play as well, but we think Texas Southern had a lot to do with that. We give all the credit to them. We need to continue to grind and get better and get refocused and get ready for the Bayou Classic. Appreciate those opening comments, Coach Jackson. First question goes to Dr. Cavill. This is Kenyatta with Dr. Cavill's Inside at the Sports Lab. As you said, you'd come into the game playing pretty well with both teams uh, actually playing pretty well, but uh, you weren't able to do as well as um, you would probably have liked coming in the game. What do you think was some of the issues um, that didn't allow you to play as well as you had been playing the last couple of weeks? 
one, I thought, you know, when we watched the tape, we just felt like uh, we didn't execute as well, you know, offensively or defensively. Uh, we did some things in special teams to kind of keep us in the game. But at the same time, that wasn't uh, the way we have been playing over the last several weeks. And like I said, I give all the credit to Texas Southern. They played well, played well enough to beat us. But when you turn the ball over and you don't convert third downs, uh, you don't stop the other team, you know, you're not going to have a very good night. You have uh, essentially an off week before you get into the Bayou Classic. Uh, this will be your second off week of the season. What is the difference between this off week uh, versus the previous off week in terms of preparing for the, the matchup? Well, I don't, you know, it's the last game of the year. So uh, we're going to do everything we can to maximize the opportunities we have to have these extra practices to get ready for Southern. So I think last time we got ready to have an off season it was really about our self scout what we have been doing. I think now it's more about making sure that we're extremely healthy, extremely focused, and making sure that we have great practices over the next several practices. Thank you, Coach Jackson. Look forward to the following week matchup. Thank you. Next question goes to Jeff Lightsey Jr. Hey, Coach Jackson, Jeff Lightsey Jr. here. How is it going? Good, good. Now, Coach, you, you talked about you got the Bayou Classic coming up. Just what do you, what does that mean for you to be able to participate in a game like this? It'll be your first one as the head coach of Grambling. So what what do you think that'll mean for you and your team going into this this next matchup? It means a chance to, to finish the season the right way. We know it's bragging rights within the state. You know, and that school's very close in proximity to, to Grambling. So it's been one of the biggest games in the history of the HBCU. So... For me to represent, I'm excited to be able to do that. My staff is as well. Our players are anxious to get back up on the field and play better than we did last week. Just a quick follow-up, Coach Jackson. Just You had a young team all year. Where have you seen growth and development from whether it's your freshman quarterback, your freshman defensive players, running backs, all that stuff? Where have you seen the growth between the first week of the season up until now? No, I think they've competed their tails off, those young players you just mentioned. I think they've gotten better. But I think we all know at some point in time, these young players hit a wall. You know, they uh, we try to push them over the wall at this point in time. We got quite a few of these guys that are playing major minutes, major positions, big quarterback, uh, be it at corner, be it at offensive line, all those particular places. So, and you said it, we are young. But at the same time, we expect those guys to be able to shoulder the load right now and push through it to give us the best opportunity to play, to win, I should say. Appreciate it, Coach. This question goes to James Hill. Hey, Coach, it's James Hill with James Hill Sports. I hope you and everybody in Grambling are well. Can you talk a little bit about Grambling State University football from the inside out, what you've been able to see this season so far? What I've been able to see so far this season is exactly where we need to grow this program. Uh, I think uh, the first recruiting class was a good class. I think we need to go out and go uh, add more talent uh, as we move forward. I think we need to go and do everything we can to rebuild the brand to back to where it should be. And I think we're just the people to do it. We feel good about where we're headed. We feel good about uh, the recruiting process that we have up to this up to this time. Now we need to go finish it and finish it with another strong class and put this talent together and, and get this program back to where it should be. Coach, the Bayou Classic, it's it's been a crown jewel, if you will, in the Black experience in terms of HBCU football. Uh, talk about going into the Dome, being a part of that legacy uh, from Cassim to uh, Coach Rob and everybody that's been a part of it, Doug, all the guys. But uh, you have a G on your chest and you'll take your team in there. Talk a little bit about it. Oh, I got this. I mean, some of the greatest coaches, um, the greatest coach that's ever coached in the HBCU space uh, is Eddie G. Robinson. And so to be able to be the leader uh, of this program in that game means the world to me. Obviously, those guys uh, have done a great job in that game. Uh, they Excuse won. Me. Hey, Skew. Hey, big dog. Hello? Coach, I'm here. Sorry about that, Coach. We had some feedback there. I apologize. Oh, okay, yeah, I thought somebody was asking another question. Uh, no, I mean, it, it, to me, it's just going to be an unbelievable experience. And uh, what you want to do in those games is go win it. And that's truly what it's all about. We, that's our focus. That's what we're going to do everything we can to, to make happen next week. Thank you, sir. Have a great bye week. Thank you. 
Next question goes to Perry Daniels. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Uh, talk about the off season for, for Grambling and, and where you are going to take the program. You spoke about recruiting. What else does the off season for the Grambling Tigers look like? I think it's a re reboot of everything. I think now that I know I've been in it, I've seen the conference firsthand. I know who the really good teams are. I know that there's some unbelievable coaches in this conference and some unbelievable teams. So I have a better understanding of exactly what we need to do. Uh, and so you have to put, put your plan in place. And so we're going to do that, you know, as an athletic department, as a football uh, uh, staff and football team, and we're going to set out to make that happen. And I think there's a reboot of facilities. I think there's a reboot of uh, players. I think there's a reboot of our weight room, just everything. I think we need to go push above and beyond of where we've been so that we can get back to what we truly want to be. And lastly, the, this Bayou Classic, the, the intensity of it and, and the relationship, someone spoke earlier about the, the G being restored. Uh, I know amongst your coaching staff, you have guys that proudly wore that S on their chest mm -hmm. uh, for, in college. Uh, so, so talk, just talk about how, how connected the two universities are and, and the meaning of this game. Oh, they're well connected. I mean, whether you go into a store, whether you go into a gas station, either somebody went to Gramlin or somebody went to Southern. And so... Uh, they're very connected. We respect that. Uh, we respect their program. I'm sure they respect ours. Uh, we understand that this is a huge game. I have some guys on my staff who graduated from Southern, been a part of that, understand exactly where it is, what it is. And so we got to do a great job of making it and staying in the moment and being able to rise up uh, for this game and play our best football, because there's no question this game will mean a lot to, to both sides. Thank you, Coach. Sure. Coach Jackson, as always, we appreciate your time. Look forward to speaking to you again next week. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Next up, we go to Arkansas Pine Bluff and Coach Don Treadwell. Good morning, Coach. Good morning to you, man. Coach, as always, we appreciate you taking some time to join us. Coach, if you could please start us out with an opening statement regarding your team's most recent outing versus Prairie View a &M. Sure. <clears throat> You know, one thing as coaches, I think it's always interesting when we evaluate an opponent on tape and then we play them to see how we stack up. And after engaging Prairie View, you know, on Saturday, you know, I felt we I felt we could clearly see and they demonstrated very well their high level of talent. And I think that certainly uh, is one of the reasons they sit on the top of the Western Division in the SWAC. I'll say, you know, for us, our challenge is here at UAPB football you know, as a team are really off season fixes, you know, not a band-aid short-term mirage. Uh, often, you know, as an interim football coach, you know, you and the staff are working daily, what I call on limited borrowed time. Whereas the next appointed head football coach will be granted quality time to pursue his vision for the team. Philosophically, I believe at the end of the day, when you seek to build something that will last, your team must be taught how to walk before they run. Questions? First question goes to Dr. Cavill. This is Kenyatta Dr. Cavill's HBCU Sports Lab, inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Sure. When you talk about learning to walk before you run um, in terms of the philosophical framework, your team was able to jump out there and, and get the lead. But as you talk about, Prairie View is able to come back and kind of stretch the lead out. Um, talk about the players that were able to do some good things for you in that matchup. Well, you, you alluded to a little bit of it there. It was nice to see our offense get on track a little bit early in the game. And, and again, that's kind of been a building process, if you will. Uh, it's not, you know, something uniquely new. We just started. We kind of have put our season, I think, as I mentioned to you guys four weeks ago, into a four-game schedule. So we've slowly tried to increment, you know, a few things here and there that might have been a little different than what we've done in the past, but not to the point that that would overwhelm the kids so they could still have an opportunity, if you will, to function within the framework of the system 
and execute. And I think when you watch the tape, you see guys executing at a better level uh, as we moved in the early phases of the game, offensively speaking. Uh, talk with Coach Alabama State in terms of the fact that this is maybe a little bit of a mini bye week because you play on that Thursday versus the following Saturday. Um, can you talk about how you prepare going into that next week? And does any of the extra time, if you would, does that help? Even though a lot of the things that you this program probably needs is really, as you said, something that has to be taken care of in the off season uh, versus this season. Can you talk about uh, that matchup in the following week on Thursday and Thanksgiving in Montgomery, Alabama? You know, I think for coaches, we typically never feel we have enough time uh, in a funny way. That's just how we are. So, <laughs> right. yes, for us, having a couple extra days is a bonus, if nothing else, for our own mind's sake, that uh, we really get an opportunity to, you know, delve in to the next opponent, Alabama State, and take a really good look at them. Where typically, if you were playing this Saturday, you know, heck, you know, there'd be a lot of things already on the plate, if you will to have to start sorting out, you know, what we might want to do here or there. But when you have a couple extra days to do that, you don't have to put a game plan together on Monday. It gives us a little bit more time, as we said, uh, to really sit back and reflect a little bit on, okay, where are we at? And then, you know, the next opponent, you know, how do we match up with what we're trying to do against them? So it helps us. And to be honest, I think it helps the kids a little bit too, because, you know, they'll have a day or two off and give them a chance to continue to rebound uh, both physically and mentally. Thank you, Coach Treadwell. I look forward to the Thanksgiving matchup, day matchup. Excuse me. Next question goes to James Hill. Hey, Coach, it's James Hill with James Hill Sports. Uh, you have some gentlemen there, uh, Mr. Britton, Mr. Perry. Uh, talk a little bit about the defensive side. We know the offense is tremendous, but just talk a little bit about your defensive side of the football. You know, I got to be honest, uh, as, as I've always been, you know, I'm limited when it comes to that because I have really tried to keep my focus, number one, in the job that I was hired to do, that's work within the framework of the offense. And then number two, now you throw the entire team on your plate. So I've really kind of have spread myself thin in a positive way in that regard, but I haven't overly stepped on any of the toes on defense. You know, they kind of like us, they have their philosophy. They keep me abreast of what's going on, but I would be remiss and there would be too much I would leave out if I tried to actually talk about the differences and the things or the player personnel and all of that. It would be better for a defensive individual to share that with you. So I'll have to pause on that one, if you will. Definitely, Coach. Uh, when you think about taking over the Golden Lions and, and being the captain of the ship, so to speak, what's it been like for you so far as you move forward and, and get ready for this game on Thanksgiving? Well, you know, I, I think I alluded to that a little bit early uh, when we talked in, in my opening statements there. You know, I think as an interim program, you know, you're always working against the clock, if you will. That's probably another way to say it. And so the ability to focus, which is where it has to start, uh, has to come from myself and then the staff. And I think we've done a good job in that. And the point being, uh, we haven't been received, if you will, as the substitute teacher. You know, when a change is made, sometimes, as you guys know, and back in the school days when the substitute teacher came in, you just never know what you were going to get. But I think uh, we set the tone early when the change did occur. And I think because of the mutual respect that we have for our players and they have for us as a staff, we've been able to navigate through this challenging time. Thank you, sir. Have a great off week and uh, uh, good luck uh, on Turkey Day. All right. Likewise. Question goes to Kyle Mosley. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Great. Well, Mark Evans and the rest of the seniors are about to wrap up their careers with the Golden Lions. Can you talk a little bit about those guys and what they meant to the program? I heard a little bit. Did you say about the seniors? Yes, Mark Evans and the rest of the seniors. And the rest of the seniors, yeah. Well, you know, certainly last week was a little bit special. In particular, it was our last home game here. And so we tried to make it a little bit special for them throughout the week and, you know, just stay connected with them and remind them of how special they are and how special a university they are connected to. And uh, I think they feel that. And it's just been a privilege, if you will, to work with those young men. And I believe that we'll continue, which we have for three weeks now of three games, 
get tremendous senior leadership. I mean, for what the young men have worked through in the three games that we've played since the change has been made, boy, my hat is really off to them. And to be honest, it probably has brought us, just because of our appreciation of those seniors, closer uh, as a staff and players, just because you have to have that component. It can't just be a coach-driven scenario. You have to have leadership uh, for the team to keep moving forward uh, despite, you know, uh, the potential distractions. So, again, you alluded to Mark Evans. You know, he's one of the captains. Uh, Noah Hayes is one of the captains. Uh, Skylar Perry, one of the captains, and Isaac Peppers. Those four young men, in my opinion, uh, have really stepped up to the plate. You know, we brought them in. I talked with them right back when the change occurred and, you know, really wanted to create for them a sense of ownership within the program. And, man, let me tell you, they have done that with flying colors. So I expect – them to come out on their last game and continue to give a great effort and represent our fine university. Thank you, coach, and good luck against Alabama State. You bet. Have a good one yourself. Question goes to Kendrick Marshall. Yeah, coach, um, anytime there's a coaching change and an interim coach is named, he has opportunity to evaluate the roster from a different set of eyes. And in your perspective, you're also being evaluated, I would imagine, by the university, whether or not you and your staff will be kept aboard moving forward. Um, how do you prepare and what's the mentality knowing that going into it? Oh, you just stay consistent. You know, again, I've been on different staffs, you know, throughout my career. And uh, the best lessons I've learned is stay in the moment. You know, don't get ahead of yourself. Don't worry too much about the past. You can't do much on either of those, but if you stay in the moment with your young men and keep them in the moment, then it's a manageable situation. And, uh, you know, at this point, like I say, we don't get too far ahead of ourselves one way or the other. We just try to stay connected with our young men, keep them working hard throughout the week, and then hoping that they will put their best performance and their best foot forward on game day. As a quick follow-up, um, just looking at your resume, you've been in this particular role before as an interim coach. How much would it mean for you to, to stick somewhere long-term after one of these experiences? You know, I haven't gotten too far with that, to be honest, because let me just tell you, my, my plate is so full. Uh, as we said, you know, working through the borrowed time that you have as an interim coach, that uh, I've just been really embracing the moment, you know, with these young men, because that's why we do it. At the end of the day, uh, you do it because you love the sport, of course, but then you love the young men that we have the privilege of working for, and we've got some quality young men here at UAPB. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Bet. Coach Treadwell, as always, we appreciate your time. Look forward to speaking to you again next week. All right. Have a great one, guys. Thank you. Tom. Next, we go to Mississippi Valley State and head coach Dancy. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Coach, as always, we appreciate you taking some time to join us. Coach, if you could please start us out with an opening statement regarding your team's most recent outing versus Southern. I thought I thought we uh, I thought we played a a great Southern team, a good Southern team, a um, high powered offense that uh, I knew we would have to prepare for. Uh, you know, uh, they played two quarterbacks, and uh, we kind of figured that that may occur, um, uh, being that the uh, the starter, um, you know, was kind of banged up from last game. So uh, uh, defensively, I thought we played okay. We didn't play our best um, early on. I thought we uh, we got out to the quarterback real good. I thought we had, I think, about eleven tackles for loss. Um, that that was that was that was impressive defensively. Offensively, I thought we moved the ball up and down the field. But despite you know a few sacks and turnovers um, in their territory, once we got there, um, they kind of stopped us. But overall, I thought we played a physical brand of ball. Um, uh, you know, they just came out on top. They made a few play, more, more plays than we did, and, and they, they came out with the victory. Those opening comments, Coach. First question goes to Dr. Cavill. This is out of Dr. Cavill's inside the HBC Sports Lab. Uh, offensively, um, quarterback Easton back, obviously that first drive, you, you able to move the ball and come up with the tough fumble. Um, it looks like it was going to be returned for a touchdown. You got maybe a burn on that side of it. But um, even with that said, you were able to rush total yards, 95 yards. So talk about the combination of offense or what you 
thought you were um, could be able to get done in that game that couldn't quite come to fruition? Uh, like like I said, uh, I thought we was able to move the ball up and down the field. It's just when we got into our, you know our territory, um, when we got into their territory, uh, man, we just you know if it wasn't for sacks and you know a few fall the fumble, uh, interception thrown. Um, I mean we like I said we did a good job with moving the ball. We just turned the ball over once we got you know into the ter- into territory. You know. Uh, and that that kind of hurt us. That that cost us, you know, uh, you know, points. But it also cost us, you know, to lose momentum. Man, uh, you know, playing a good good football team, you can't turn the ball over. That's one thing you cannot do is turn the ball over. And I thought, you know, that kind of hurt us. You know, um, I think we, you know, like you said, a fumble and in, in, in the interception. I thought that was big because we could have, you know, that could have led to points, whether field goal or, or you know a touchdown. So you know. Um, you know, we just got to continue to work, man, and, and finish this season out strong and, and, and end it on a positive note for these seniors that's, that, that, that's been a part of this program and, and set this program um, that, that has helped transition this program into, a, to a, into um, you know, a, a decent football team, a decent program. Follow-up question is about next week's game, last game at home for the seniors going out. Obviously, last year they were able to go on the road and, and get a victory against Prairie View. This time you get Prairie View coming in. Um, different type of team. Last year they seemed to want to pass a little more. This year they tend to be running. But in this last game against Pine Bluff, Trajan Connolly actually uh, threw uh, for five touchdowns. Um, not a lot of attempts, but very efficient on attempts. Uh, with the type of style of defense you want to play against them, does any of that change? based on the way they try to play offensively or you still going to seek to be attacking defense? Um, at the end of the day, I think, like I tell my guys all the time, it's not a lot, it's not a lot about what they do. It's, it's about what mm-hmm. we do. You know, we can go out and execute like we know we can execute, uh, continue to play the brand of football um, that we know how to play and that's physical football. Then we, you know, then we, we'll put ourselves in a better situation to win the game. Um, they got an outstanding quarterback who can't run and throw the ball. I think he's a great, uh, a phenomenal runner. But like you said, he can't pass the football. So we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta focus more on, you know, like I say, stopping the run, but making them throw the ball and uh, putting ourselves in position that we can defend the pass, but also letting our pass rushers get after the quarterback uh, like they did, like they did this week. You know, we had a lot of tackles for loss, man. We just gave up a big play here and there. Um, at the wrong time. So um, I'm, I'm high on our guys, man. I'm, I'm hard on them. And I, and I know we'll go out and, and, and like I say, send these singers out the right way, playing them at home, last game at home. And I know our guys will be amped to finish this season out strong. Thank you, Coach Nancy. Look forward to the matchup. Yes, sir. Thank you. Next question goes to James Hill. Hey, Coach Nancy, I hope you and everybody back in the Delta are well. Just talk a little bit about your program and moving it to the next level and continuing to uh, restore the glory, if you will, with Delta Devils football. Oh man, uh, I think it's I think it's time to to you know at, at this point I think it's time to build a program. Uh, I tell people all the time it's 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 easy to go and put a team out on the field week in and week out, but what you want to do at a university is build a program. A program lasts forever. You know, um, a team, you just putting them on the field week in and week out. And I think it starts, um, it's, it's a lot of areas where we have to get better in when it comes to building this program. Um, you know, um, strength and conditioning is one. Um, and, and also just just be, just putting together a full roster of players that uh, when when one guy goes down, you got another guy behind him that's just as talented as he is. So uh, when you're talking about a program, man, you're talking about building, building it from the top, from, from, the, from the top down. And, and, and again, it starts at the top and um, we, we want to build a program here and we want a program that will last. But at the end of the day, uh, it's a lot of resources that goes into it. And you, you got to be ready to, uh, you know, fund those resources into the program in order for it to be a lasting program and, and in order for it to be a winning program. So it's, it's a lot of elements to it, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm willing to get it done. Coach, uh, talk a little bit about those quality student athletes. They play hard. Guys are competitive, and they do want to get better every Saturday. I think that's that's the key with these guys, man. For the for the longest, you know, since I since I've taken over as the head coach, one thing about these young men, man, we don't quit. 
You know, it don't it doesn't matter about the record. The record's out the window. We we go we we go out every day. We practice hard. We practice hard against each other, and we prepare for the opponent that's coming in on Saturday. And I, I commend these guys all the time about you know their work ethic. If you continue to do things the right way, something good will pay off. Yeah, it may not pay off like we want it, but um, just continue to work hard at your craft. And at the end of the day, um, we we just let the chips fall where they may. But I, I'm proud of these guys by the way they compete. They compete against anybody. It doesn't matter the team on Saturdays. It doesn't matter who we play. These guys just go out and play hard. And um, I can't be more uh, thankful to have this group of young men um, who prepare themselves the right way and go out and, and play the way they play week in and week out. Coach, talk a little bit about your thoughts on Prairie View. They're well coached. They have good players and they play hard. Just talk a little bit about what you see from the Panthers. Very explosive team. Uh, they can score. They can score. Uh, you, you have to, uh, like I say, you have to put yourselves in the right position in order to stop this team. Uh, they're they're well coached team. Um, and you can see it. You can see it in their play. But you know they don't quit. And 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 in any minute they can they can they can light up the scoreboard on you. So you just got to go out and and play and. Pl and play them the right way. Uh, be a physical, be a physical team. Um, play them hard, and 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 don't make and limit and limit the mistakes that you make, and try to create turnovers. I think when we create turnovers, then that put us in and give us gives us a better chance of winning the game. And that's what we didn't do this week. We didn't create enough turnovers, and I think uh, offensively we can't turn the ball over. I think we moving the ball well. We just, you know, turn the ball over. Um, at the at the wrong time, so uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good game, man. Um, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see these guys play their last game here at home, and I know that they'll go out and and, and play hard for us. So uh, it's gonna be a good, exciting game. I can see it. Thank you, sir. Have a blessed week. Yes, sir. Thank you. Last question goes to Terrence Harris. Hey, coach, how you doing? I'm all right. How you doing? I'm good. Hey, you know, in a game like this, where obviously you know you 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 got seniors who are playing their last game. You got Prairie View coming in with a lot riding on this game. What do you talk to your team about in terms of preparation and how to approach this game? Just finishing it the right way. I talk about that all the time, man. I want to send these guys out. Uh, a lot of these guys have been a part of this program for three years. And um, and I think this program has transitioned in the last three years. Uh, the wins doesn't speak for it, but, but the way we play speaks a lot. So uh, I just want to send these guys out the right way. It's not a lot about what Prairie View – uh, I mean, what, what they have to do in order to, to make it to the championship, but it's all about what we do and how we go out um, on, on this final game. We, un we understand what's, what's at stake for them, but we also understand what's at stake for us as well, and that's, that's winning this last football game and going into the offseason on a good note with a good taste in our mouth. And um, So that's, that's, that's how we're going to approach it and, 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 and play a good game on Saturday. Cool. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Coach Dancy, as always, we appreciate your time. Look forward to speaking to you again next week. All right, thank you. Thank you. Next up, we go to Prairie View A&M University and Coach Bubba McDowell. Let's see, we have to this. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Good morning. Coach, as always, we appreciate you taking some time to join us. Coach, if you would please start us out with an opening statement regarding your team's most recent outing versus Arkansas Pine Bluff. Yeah, I, I think we came out. Uh, first of all, I just want to say I'm proud of these young men. Again, just coming out, um, long road trip, uh, you know, staying focused. Uh, and again, going out and playing, um, playing a good football game. Um, I know doing what they, you know, was taught to do um, uh, throughout the rest, throughout the entire week. Um, uh, we, we went up there again, played against a good football team, no doubt. Uh, and, and I'd say that, you know, not likely because, yeah, again, those guys, Again, on any given um, day, you know, uh, you, you, you know, teams are good until they're not, you know. And you know, we we went out there. They 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 hit us in the mouth early with uh, ten points. And and again, as I always tell my guys, you know, we gotta be able to um, handle handle the adversities. You know, there's always gonna be some ups and downs during the course of the game, and how well <clears throat> we handle it as as a group, you know, gonna dictate how well what the outcome of the game is. And and again, we went out there, um, you know, we 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 regroup and and they came back. You know, we we played some uh, good football down down the stretch. Um, 
you know, we, the block punt, you know, we, we got to work on some things, of course, uh, to help, you know, to uh, minimize uh, scoring and minimize mistakes, um, you know, special team wise. But overall, again, just really uh, proud of the guys, how they uh, bounce back, you know, and finish the game. Appreciate those opening comments. Coach, <laughs> first question goes to Dr. Cavill. This is Kenyatta, Dr. Cavill is inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Um, you talk about getting down early in your team, being able to push through that and come back on the other side really strong in terms of answering the question, particularly in that second quarter, uh, rebounding with 21 points and then even coming out of the se uh, second half in terms of the third quarter, putting up 20, mm -hmm. um, scoring six touchdowns in that period. You were able to rush the ball for 281 yards, but I want to talk about Trazon Connolly whose efficiency was really off the chart. In terms of just eight pass attempts, he threw five touchdowns. Uh, was that a schematic of the game? Obviously, you want to be able to continue to rush the ball, uh, but did, did you see some things, uh, or at least your coordinator, in regards to different plays uh, where you said, all right, we're going to take it, attempt to go, get to the end zone, or was this just a, a factor of throwing the ball and then your receivers making plays after that to get in the end zone? A little bit of both. I mean, again, we we come into uh, into the game again, wanting to establish running game and a passing game. You know, of course, you know, one is going to help the other if you're successful at. It. If you're running the ball, you know, um, then they you know stack the box. You know, then you you throw the ball. And vice versa, if you're throwing the ball really well and then they drop an eight, you should be able to run the ball. But yeah, he, I mean, he played a heck of a game. I mean, shoot, I mean, you know, I, I, I love the way he just, you know, continued to be poised about everything. And, and just his, he, he takes it for what it is, you know, and again, not trying to do too much and just doing what he do best. You know? And we talked about that all the time. Just, you know, take what they give you, you know, and, and let the rest take care of itself, you know. And he, he played a heck of a game, man. And, you know, and we only can just look forward to him getting better each time we get out there. Uh, uh, week by week, you know, and, and get and get better. Shoot, he, he's that dude, man. And again, he's uh, if if he continues to just do what he do, uh, you know, uh, I, I think we, you know, we we can we can do some good things, man. You know, but like I say, it's just it's just a matter of these guys. We can coach it as as, as coaches, but I always tell them, dude, you guys are out there playing the game. You guys know what to do. Go execute it, and, and it's not like you're not athletic enough to do it, talented enough to do it. You just got to go out there and want to do it and, and do it the best your ability. And that's what they did this weekend. You know, they they took advantage of um, you know situations. Uh, wide receivers played really well. They caught the ball. You know, and when they do that, when we do that uh, as a group, you know, we, we're pretty darn good. I, I like that. I can appreciate that dude. I got to remember that. Coach. <laughs> follow, up, <laughs> follow up next week with Mississippi Valley State. Um, obviously, Prairie View has a lot on the line. There's no secret about that. And players read, understand that. Do you speak openly about it or do you focus on the team, particularly with the backdrop that this team came in to Prairie View in terms of your house, uh, beat you last year to close out the season. Um, so, you don't have to worry about them focusing on the record because of that, or mm -hmm. is that a different framework of how you go about this next matchup? No, no, they 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 aware what's what's at stake, and, and I make sure they know what's what what's at stake. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. again, we know going into Valley. I mean, we know Dan's gonna have them guys ready to go, man. Again, and, you know, senior, you know, a lot of seniors that last home game, and you know, they're gonna put forth the effort. We know that they did the exact same thing when they came here. I mean, they they put it to us, man, and 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 I don't expect anything less, you know, especially uh, you know. With, way he coaches man um like i say he, he gets those guys going and you know we got to do the same on this end uh and then if we go out and again just uh play play football the way we know how and execute it the way that we know how and and i think we'll, we'll be okay you know but again they're out there playing a the football game and they got to execute it and get it done you know in all phases special team offense and defense thank you coach Wink. uh look forward to the matchup good luck this weekend Stop. Next question goes to James Hill. Hey, Coach, I hope you and the fellas are well. Uh, you guys are playing well, six and four, five and two. You control your own destiny. Just talk about uh, building winners, building champions, and continuing to grind, so to speak. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. You know, you, we're, in a, we're in a space right now, a uh, great opportunity to uh, establish uh, something really, really good uh, going back to back. And again, I, um, I know, you know, a lot of people say, yeah, you know, it, it don't don't speak on it. But again, I, I, our players need to know that. I mean, they need to know and what they've done uh, from the beginning of the year to uh, where we're at right now. And yes, we had some help and thank God. And, uh, but we are in a position right now to, uh, you know, to uh, do some good things and they got to understand that uh, they got to go out and, and, and make, make it happen again, just by hearing it, you know, again, you, you got, they, they got the opportunity to do it and they got to go out, execute, do what they need to do, how to do it, what they taught to do, you know, and, and, and play good, uh, play against a good football team. And if they do that, JH, you know, we, we should be okay again. And we know it's going to be physical. We, uh, we know Dan's going to have, Coach Dan's going to have some things ready for us. And, you know, and, and well as he should, I mean, it, it, they're a good football team at the end of the day. And we, we, we just got to go out and execute the way we know how. Coach, the one game at a time mentality. Uh, you'll go in the in the valley, Highway 82, take that turn, go in there to Rice Totten. Uh, just talk about the focus level and what you guys need to do to go in and, and do what you need to do. Yeah, want to yeah. do. Yeah, we definitely want to come out with victory. We want to come out and win this game. But again, they got to understand it all starts this week in practice, you know, focusing on the things that we need to correct from last week and uh, understanding that, you know, we got to go into this game uh, and, and make less mistakes. Uh, I've always said throughout the course of the year, the, the team that makes the less mistakes, the team that's more physical, uh, uh, the team that, that, that gets it going uh, offensively, defensively, and special teams, you know, the team's going to win the game, you know. So these guys knowing that going into Valley, you know, they got to prepare themselves this week to, to go and play against a, a good football team. Thank you, sir. Have a blessed week. Thank you, sir. Last question goes to Terrence Harris. Hey, coach, how you doing? Good team. Hey, I know, you know, the mission is far from complete, but what, is it, what does it feel like, though, to be, to have this team back here at this point in this position again for the second straight year? I mean, and knowing that, you know, I mean, you guys, you went through a lot of changes over the off season. So what is it like, you know, to, to, to be back here and be in this position? It feels really good, man. It really does. And again, uh, you know, uh, you guys don't know it. Uh, a lot of fans don't know, it, but these guys have been really resilient, man, from, from the start of August and uh, training camp to some of the things that we've been going through. And they, I mean, they, 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 they hung in there, man, as a team, you know, and they continue to, uh, you know, continue to go out there each week, each day, you know, prepare themselves and get ready to uh, play against football teams, uh, uh, which, again, at least back to where we are right now. I mean, we're in a good position, um, and they got to understand that. And you know, the opportunity doesn't come often. You know, they got to take advantage of the opportunities. And, and if they do that, you know, they, we're going to be okay. But the opportunities, again, you know, you got you to gotta take care of the opportunity, you know, on, on the field come Saturday. Uh, uh, week after week, you know, again, I would say you're good until you're not, you know, and special teams, uh, offense, defense, you all got to get it done. You know, it has to be one unit out there uh, performing at their very, very best in, in order to be a good football team week to week. And, you know, they understand that. They know what's, again, what's at stake. And then they're, again, they're, 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 they come together, uh, again, uh, as, as a group, as a team. And I think that's, that is definitely what's uh, keeping them going uh, strong right now. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Coach McDowell, as always, we appreciate your time. Look forward to speak to you again next week. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Next up, we go to Southern University. Head Coach Eric Dooley. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Doing great, Coach. And as always, we appreciate you taking some time to join us. Coach, if you could please start us out with an opening statement regarding your team's most recent outing versus Mississippi Valley State. Yeah, we, we had an opportunity and we knew it was going to be a tough football game uh, with the uh, the likes of Mississippi Valley because we know the style of uh, play that they play. But, you know, it was a, um, a cold day. I will say that uh, not not a, a cold nature guy, but the guys, it was a senior day. Uh, the guys came out, uh, the fans showed up for it and uh, it was a, a good fought uh, battle. Fortunate enough, we came out on top of our seniors to send those guys out the right way and, and um had a good fight. Uh, so, you know, everybody came out healthy. Uh, of course, you know, Coach Dance is going to have his team ready to play. Uh, but our guys responded and played well. Appreciate those opening comments. Coach, first question goes to James Hill. 
Hey, Coach, I hope you and all the Jags are well. Uh, talk about, about Glendon McDaniel, uh, B. Sean, and even Harold got a few snaps. Yeah, it was just one of those things that we, we thought it was uh, – uh, it was only fitting, you know, you talk about a senior quarterback to get an opportunity uh, to play his last home game and, and, and play well, rather well uh, after not, you know, getting a lot of uh, playing time and, and to come in and respond like that just shows the uh, the character of the young man and, 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 and his coach that's working with him that you always got to be prepared because everybody's one player away from playing. But uh, stepped up and made some plays. Of course, we know blood will come in. He's been hitting a little playing time throughout the season. So uh, just a credit to uh, – to uh, the, the coach, uh, what he, how he prepares those guys. Coach, you returned back home to Mumford. Uh, now you're here. You've been here this season, and now you're getting ready to get your team ready for the Bayou Classic. Talk a little bit about what that looks like, and it's always a beautiful thing to be back in the Dome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We know that uh, when you talk about that game right there, we know the magnitude of that game. I mean, uh, it's a big football game. There's no question about it. There's no secret about it. Uh, in my opinion, you know, I, I was told a long time ago all roads will be leading to New Orleans. So we do understand the magnitude of that game. And uh, we're looking forward to it right now. We, uh, you know, thankful enough, we got an opportunity to now to have a week off. Everybody, each team always have that week, that bye week before the bye your classes. So we have a chance to, to get some guys back. Uh, I, I won't say get them back from being injured, but just to get them a little closer to 100% of being healthy. Because uh, at this point in time, no one is 100% healthy. But just to continue to let those guys uh, close in and on, on this game right here. Also taking care of the academic side of it as we come to a closure of this semester. Thank you, sir. Have a blessed week and, and good luck in the classic. You too. Thank you. Next question goes to Dr. Cavill. This is Kenyatta, doctors inside the HBC Sports Lab. Want to talk about your offensive side of the ball, um, your receiving core. We talked about the multiple quarterbacks that played in there but um, a lot of your receivers got their hands on the ball um, <laughs> depth in the depth chart uh, talk about uh, them being able to put up 240 yards uh, among all those receivers getting their hands on the ball you know I, I think that's the beauty of it right there you, you, you kind of want a uh, collective group you know it's, it's so easy to get that one standout wide receiver and then you know you do so many things to stop that guy you can bracket that guy you can double that guy do a lot of different things but I think when you spread the ball around, it helps out tremendously. And, and those guys understand that, you know, when you can just be as happy when the next guy is having a great day as if it was your day. So we just want to continue in that fashion right there. We're still trying to uh, find our niche with, with the wide outs. That's going to always be a work in progress. Uh, me being a former wide out, I'm going to always try to get that position to uh, to escalate as, as so all the, team, all the positions on the team. Follow-up question is about this week. Obviously, the Bayou Classic is in two weeks, which means that you have a week off. You had a week off early in the season, and now you have this um, additional week off. Can you talk about the difference between how you the two weeks and the fact that um, a couple of games will be played this weekend that will determine even more so the importance of the Bayou class? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always full steam ahead. I, I believe in uh... – I always use the uh, acronym WIN, and that's what's important now. What's important right now is that we get better as a football team. Uh, we get better in the classroom. We get better just as a whole. Each opportunity, we get a chance to go out there. And, and let's not – we know we know the importance of uh, this week here. And, and, and I'll be – I don't know what I can call myself if I say I wouldn't be watching. Of course I'm going to be watching. <laughs> uh, it, it holds a lot to it right there. So, you know, but the, at the end of the day uh, – we just got to do our part. We just got to stay focused on uh, what's important to us right now, and that's getting prepared for, which is we know uh, down in Louisiana, a huge football game. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Next question goes to Perry Daniels. Preparation week. Good morning, Coach. Uh, recently, Jatari Carter was named to the Senior Bowl. Can you talk about that young man's play? and his impact on your program and what his invite to play in the Senior Bowl does for your program. I, I wish J J uh, Carter, Carter was here. He's not here. He's already in the NFL. Uh, oh, my he, bad. I forgive yeah, me. Yeah. last year, but I, you can tell you can send him back. I'll send him back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Coach. My bad. No Talk problem. about... <laughs> 
Talk about the, the, the upcoming classic. You've been on both sides of this game. Um, and, and just kind of talk about the preparation for it and the dynamic from being on both sides of, of this game. Well, I, I can say that I'm, I was truly blessed, uh, you know, to be among uh, uh, living legends and legends, uh, guys that really, you know, uh, was the forefront of, of, of this uh, of this conference, uh, of just HBCU football all together, uh, and having the opportunity to uh, play under the likes of uh, uh, Eddie Robinson. I mean, uh, that, that's an honor for me. And then have the opportunity to come back and coach with a living legend right now, uh, Pete Richardson. So, I mean, it, it, I've been blessed, I can say that right there, to understand that. But, you know, all that doesn't matter. <laughs> Only thing on that is this, this year's game right here. And uh, we just got to take it as it comes. We're going to always work hard. Uh, we understand what's at stake, what we need to do, and how we need to go about getting it done. So we're just going to remain focused and, and, and understand what's important now for us. That's to prepare this week here. And then next week, get ready for a, a huge contest. Thank you, Coach. And if I see Jatari, I'll send him your way. <laughs> <laughs> Last question goes to Ernest Ricks. Hey, Coach Ernest Ricks, MTNV Sports. Um, Coach, I, I just want to ask, um, as you prepare for this uh, next game against Grambling, what are some of the strengths that you see in that squad? Well, uh, you know, when, when you know that the history of the program and you know just the history of where those guys are, uh, they're going to compete at a high level. It doesn't matter what's going on. And a, a game of this magnitude, nothing matters. I mean, everybody, uh, that's some of the reason why you go to the university, because of the likes of the Bayou Classic. So uh, they have some strengths on, you know, they're going to play strong uh, defense in football right now. Uh, uh, in the past, they had their running game, uh, running the guys, the young men, they can run the football. And, and the quarterback come to age right now. You're talking about at this point in time right now, no one is a freshman. Uh, this is the end of the year. So everybody uh, understand, uh, been up watching tape and looking at game tape. So everybody's equal. They're going to play hard. The one thing I do know about Grambling State University, they're going to play hard. It's going to be a 60-minute contest. And, and I expect both teams to play hard. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Coach Dooley, as always, we appreciate your time. Look forward to speaking to you again next week. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next up, we go to Texas Southern and Coach Clarence McKinney. You see that we have Coach with us. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Coach McKinney, as always, we appreciate your time. If you could please start us out with an opening statement regarding your team's most recent outing versus Grambling State. Yeah, um, good win for us of a, a tough Grambling State program. Uh, I think our team came out of the gates and started fast. Uh, didn't score on the opening drive, but we flipped the field. Uh, got a stop and, and got ourselves in position to, uh, to score early. I think uh, the game came down to us um, winning on third downs, both offensively and defensively, as well as um, winning the turnover battle. Uh, defensively, we were able to uh, keep Grambling out of the red zone. And, and offensively, we, when we got in the red zone, we were able to cash in on the opportunity. So I think um, that's why we won the game. Appreciate those comments, Coach. First question goes to Dr. Cavill. This is Kenyatta, Dr. Cavill's inside the HBC Sports Lab. Good morning, Coach McKinney. Good morning, Doc. I think it could be argued that this is probably the best total game the team has played uh, since you took over the program, certainly in conference play. Uh, if, if the estimation, maybe you can point me to a different one. Um, uh, but it's, it's one of the one of the better games we've played total as a team. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, wanted to ask a little bit about with so many things being on the line this weekend, uh, opportunity to have a winning record at the end of the season. Um, also, the race is still uh, in contention in regards to, uh, to how you come out of this game. Obviously, some things are not in your control, but you take a long road trip against Alabama A&M. Talk a little bit about, do you put that in on the table for your players? Obviously, they talk about a lot of things, so do you focus more about uh, what you're gonna do in terms of uh, your game preparation? Yeah, well, we, we've... <laughs> We're treating this week like we've treated every week in the past. You know, this is the most important game of the season. Um, you're right. Um, we have something to play for. We're playing for uh, a win to have a winning record. And those are the things that we can control. And so um, 
although we'll be paying attention to what happens in some other games, um, um, we better focus on the game at hand because if we don't take care of business in our game, what happens in other games won't matter. Last question I have for you, Coach, in terms of your ability to rush the ball this past weekend. Obviously, Darius Owens had 105 yards, 13 carries, one touchdown, but you had a 253 yards, so you're able to get it down on the ground by multiple players. Talk a little bit about the ability to run the ball. Yeah, we have a talented running back uh, group of guys. Uh, we were without uh, Ja'Cory Howard. This weekend, and some other guys, uh, Kevin Harris and and uh, Vian Ford, along with Ladarius Owens, all decided to step up and and uh, contribute. I, I think that just um, without our offensive line being the group of guys and 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 join, um, mm. being able to run the ball, and it starts with those guys, not our running backs. Our running backs are just running through the holes that are created by offensive line. I think our offensive line did a tremendous job of uh, allowing us the ability to uh, to rush the ball. Point well taken. Thank you, Coach. Good luck this weekend. Look forward to the matchup. Thank you. Next question goes to James Hill. Good morning, Coach. I hope you and everybody are well. Just talk a little bit about Andrew Body and his development and what he's been able to do so far. Yeah, Andrew. Andrew's... Uh, Developing great, you know. He, he stepped on campus from day one. He, he took on a leadership role, and, and he's he's worked extremely hard both in the classroom, in the weight room, in the film room, and he's just developing into a, a great quarterback. We're excited about uh, his continued growth, uh, and we're excited about him leading this team. And, and you know, we're just lucky and happy to have him. Coach, up next, a and uh, What are you seeing when you look on tape and look look at Alabama A&M? They're a tough team. You know, they've had some tough breaks, but uh, they play extremely hard defensively. Um, great uh, in the special teams game, and we know what they can do offensively. They can be explosive at any, any point in time. And so uh, we got our hands full in all three phases of the game. And we just hope we can, we can come out and play, uh, continue to, to play a complete game as we did this past weekend. Coach, in closing the SWAC West, uh, how the West was won, just talk a little bit about how competitive it is going down the stretch. Extremely competitive. I, I think, you know, the teams in the SWAC West are, are really similar. You can, um, on any given Saturday, any team can, can beat, it's opponent, so you got to come and play your A game each week, week in and week out, and, and hopefully you can have a chance to come out on top. Thank you, sir. Have a blessed week. Thank you. You do the same. Next question goes to Ernest Ricks. Hey, Coach. How you doing? Uh, Ernest Ricks, MTV Sports. Awesome. Um, coach, I, I had a question. Um, what was it like managing and paying attention to Andrew Body during the last game? I know he had um, – um, there was a reported, like, sickness um, going into the game. What was it like managing him during that game? Uh, you know, Andrew manages himself, and I don't think uh, anything or anyone could have kept him away from this game. Uh, we have a, a great group of doctors, a great training staff, and uh, allow, we, we allow them to handle the medical side of it. Uh, Andrew – wants to be there to lead his team. And, and he he did what it took to get himself prepared, you know, from, from an illness. And, you know, he, he just displayed to his team how tough he is and how much this team's this team means to him. So um, with, with that attitude, guys are, are more willing to go out there and, and give their all to play for Andrew. Coach, thank you. How how often um, do you talk to Mr. Body about the next level uh, in in life after after his time at Texas Southern? Well, we don't we don't talk about the next level as, as often as you may think. We we're focused on on improving him for this level, and so uh, each week it's about him just improving his game as a quarterback, improving uh, our team, and and. 
if he continues to improve, the next level will, will, will happen. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate you. Thank you. Next question goes to Jeff Lightsey Jr. Hey, Coach McKinney, Jeff Lightsey Jr. How's it going? Good. How's it going, Joe? I'm good. Now, Coach, you still have one game left, but you guys were picked to finish at the bottom of the West. And to see that you guys have had a pretty good season, what does that say about you, your staff, and your team to see that you're fighting for that top spot in the slot in the SWAC championship game at the end of the season? Well, it says that we're a resilient group. You know, the staff, the team, you know, we, we know that we're not uh, the worst team in the SWAC. We knew that going into it. It was just a matter of us going out and, and, and showing it. And so we we feel like we've laid uh, a solid foundation and we, we're putting ourselves in position to win some of these games and and, and be in the conversation. I, I'm sorry, I'm a man, of, I like consistency. So I like to see what I like to see every week. And I like to see our wonderful persons that are taking their time out to do this. Um, wonderful game last week versus a &M. Coach Maynard had his team ready to play. They came out, uh, and they didn't lay down whatsoever. They really were ready and prepared. They stumbled up on a running game that uh, gave us problems. We surrendered more yards than we've surrendered uh, rushing in quite some time. Um, 21 first downs, 80 plays, 325 yards, 215 rushing yards, uh, time possession, 33 minutes. Uh, we lost the time possession, which we don't normally lose. Also, a 12 penalties, 110 yards, second straight game with plus 10 penalties. That's not who we are. So, of course, we had a wonderful meeting about that to try to bring some solvency to those problems. We did win the game, though. That was a bonus. That was a plus. I'm proud of the coaching staff, the fans, uh, the young men that's playing for us and all involved, the support staff. But we plan on doing better and coming out better with the task that we have this week with Alcorn. Appreciate those comments, Coach. First question goes to Charles Bishop. Good morning, Coach. How you doing? How you doing, sir? Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, obviously, Shadour put out a tweet, two feels great. He's ready to play this week. Yeah. Uh, but um, when he went down, what was it like for you? Uh, you guys have such a special relationship, father-son, but to transition from coach uh, to dad when Shadour went down? Well, Really, I was still coach as I was walking out there because we pride ourselves on being tough and physically tough. We've only had two guys go down on the field this season that we actually had to go out uh, to bring back. He got up. We, that's what we do. He got up and he came on back to the sideline, but he he was a little cloudy, a little cloudy, and we uh, administered to that, but he was good. Then when I went into the tent, then asking what, uh, then I was scolding him as a coach, like we told you to get down. I told you to get down several times uh, in the last few weeks, but you still act like you want to run the darn ball, um, like like you, Lamar Jackson, man. We don't need Lamar right now. We need Shador Sanders. So I think he learned his lesson. You will see some of the best slides that you ever seen before this week. I promise you. You're gonna think he's a baseball player with the way he's gonna be sliding. <laughs> no doubt. Quick follow-up, Coach. Uh, uh, Aubrey Miller, uh, his mm -hmm. play, uh, he came in with you in the spring of 20 season. But yeah. talk a bit about his uh, maturation as a player under your two. Well, uh, forget the player part, the person. Maturation of the person is what we wanted to see him mature and uh, be consistent on and off the field and, and not seek praise from people and, instead of just going out there and balling and just doing your thing and knowing knowing who you are and that you're what you're capable of. And uh, he's rewarded with a invite to uh, the senior bowl, as well as uh, Dallas Daniels, East and West, right? Dallas Daniels received the invite to the East and, uh, East and West Rhyme. Well, I believe that's what they call it. And so, so long since I even thought about those games, but we have guys like that, that are really great for the program. I mean, they're smart, tough, fast, disciplined kids with character, tremendous amount of character, both of those young men. And uh, I'm thankful that they were rewarded, them both. And uh, we should have a couple more guys that get rewarded uh, before the conclusion of the season as well. No doubt. Appreciate your time, Coach. Thank you, boss man. Next question goes to Kendrick Marshall. Yeah, Coach. Um, Travis has been back for a few weeks. He got his first mm -hmm. touchdown and his first interception last week in the game was Alabama A&M. How would you assess his performance since coming back from injury? 
Well, I, I believe he's only probably given up one pass on a slant um, that really didn't hurt us. I don't even know if it was the first down this season, one or two at the most. And he, he shoot, it, I can't believe they even tried him like that. Really, I really can't because you keep trying him, he's, he's going to come up with that ball. They're luckily that he didn't uh, house that thing. But Travis is more than what they say he is. The way he practices, the way he prepares, the way he goes about his business is that of a pro. And he's learning more and more each week. And we just got on him uh, about lifting. You know, he, him and, he, he in the weight room uh, don't get, really get along. I told him they better learn how to cope with each other and like each other and they better get married in the off season. So once he learns that and understands how prominent that is to his body and uh, he, he he's going to be all right. But I, I love what he brings to the table. He's a threat offensively, defensively, special teams. Anytime he's on the field, you got to understand where 12 is. A quick follow-up coach. Um, last weekend, you guys won your 10th straight game. First time in school history, you guys have gone 10 and 0. You guys are undefeated in the swag as well. Um, what would it mean for, for you and the program to finish off the regular season unbeaten in the SWAC and head off to this championship game? Well, that's the plan. That's always been the plan. Uh, we've been screaming and preaching dominate all season. Uh, at the conclusion of last season, when we regrouped and really sat down and, and, and thought about why we came up short, and that's what we've been preaching. That's what – that's the goal. That's the objective. So – that that's what we plan on doing and uh the kids are 100 percent for it the staff is we don't never say the word buying in because it's like we selling some we ain't selling nothing and we are who we are but the kids are truly dedicated and that's the goal that's been the goal since day one all right thanks coach appreciate it thank you sir next question goes to james hill hey coach i hope you will it's james hill with james hill sports uh rivalries uh, Florida State, Miami, the state championship, Cowboys, uh, Yankees and Red Sox, rivalries, uh, Jackson State and Alcorn. Just talk about the rivalry week in the SWAC. Well, uh, I'm just getting to understand the, the rivalries as well. But I tell you what, uh, shoot, they have a wonderful head coach over there and Coach McNair. They, they, a storied uh, school, university. I have the utmost respect. When I tell you the utmost respect, to me, Coach McNair is, is truly one of the leaders. Uh, he's a pillar of the HBCU uh, legacy. Um, when I was at, uh, where was it? Oh, Southern Miss visiting um, down there with Shador. They were playing against Southern Miss and I went I took it upon myself on a visit to Southern Miss to go in his locker room and meet him and his kids uh, uh, so that's how much love and respect and admiration I have for coach and uh, he is he's a gift he's he's a gift to the swag he's always been a gift to any coaching um, unit that he's been a part of and and I just got love for him so going to the game it's, it's a tremendous game it's a close close proximity rivalry and uh it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Oh, Shador is uh, spreading the wealth, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Hooks, uh, Hunter got one. Uh, Stevens and Gaines. Just talk about Shador as he continues to carve them up like turkeys. Well, uh, I, I didn't think he played well throwing the football. We didn't play well throwing the football last week. Um, Fourteen for twenty-five. That's that's horrible. Uh, four D, four TD passes. I, I accept that, but. Um, he, he's known for his accuracy. That wasn't indicative to who he is and missing that many targets. When we're missing that many targets, we got to reevaluate our game plan, our route structure and all of that, because that's not who Shador is missing that many targets and in only 25 attempts. Um, he's growing. He's doing what he needs to do. But we, we throw the ball to the man that's open. That's why it's a blessing to play receiver for Jackson State. Um, it's no favorites. Whoever gets open, they get the ball. But when it's one-on-one -on -one, um, and the other team is playing man, then he takes his choice uh, or where that ball goes. But that's pretty much pre predetermined by how these guys practice during the week. A quarterback goes to where what he trusts and who he knows is going to come down with the ball for him. So that's kind of the way he plays his game. But it's, it's great to play receiver for Jackson State because that ball is going to find you if you're open. Thank you, Coach. Have a blessed week.
You as well, my man. Got time for two more questions. First one goes to Jeff Lightsey Jr. Coach, it's Jeff Lightsey Jr. How's it going? Great, sir. How you doing? I'm good. Now, I, I just have a question. You put out a video about uh, addressing it and talking to your team about addressing rumors, coaching rumors with your name. Why is it important? I, we understand why it's important to tell your team, but why is it important for you to put that out for the media and for the public to see that these are conversations that you have with your team and it's like, hey, ain't nothing going on? We put everything out. And it wasn't just that. I mean, you, you get to see what I say in the meetings every morning, every day. We don't address that and just keep that a secret. We this is the way we recruit, man. The social media is the way we recruit. We don't have the lofty, lofty budgets and uh, all the uh, things that uh, recruiting budgets may give you. We don't have all that. So social media is the way we do everything. Uh, a multitude of these players that are here now saw us on social media and wanted to be a part <laughs> of the, the feeling of motion. Who's that? Okay. Buggy, don't get fired on the spot in, in, in public while I'm doing <laughs> I'm doing media. We're talking about media and you come in like you Santa. So uh, that's the way we do things. We don't shy away from the truth. I want people to know where I stand and, and how I get down and how I move. So we don't shy away from it. That's why it's important to put out. We, we put out all the good stuff. You, know, you got to put the bad with the good, the, the questionable things as well. Well, we are equal opportunity to employ around here. Appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, boss. Last question goes to Zach McKinnon. How you doing, Coach? This weekend, you guys got a huge game against Alcorn State in the Soul Bowl. They bring in the, the SWAC's leading rusher and Jarvion Howard. Just watching film on the team and how they approach the run game, what are some of the biggest things that you've noticed on how you guys are going to have to slow him down this weekend? Well, he's a big back, and he can run the ball really well. Um, the way we slow a rusher down is to score points. Because when you're scoring points and you're scoring points and hopefully you're up by 14 or 20, it's hard to just turn around and hand the ball off because that takes time. And also um, it's not easy to, to get down the field slowly, but surely when someone has a, a distinct running game, you got to understand it's going to take at least 10 to 12 plays to even get it to the paint. That's, that's a lot of attempts for something not to go wrong. It's going to be offsides. It's going to be holding. It's going to be something. If you're trying to sustain a 12 to 15 play drive, especially when, uh, many teams have the propensity to be penalized. And I'm trying to say that politely as I can, but we are one of the most penalized teams in, uh, in HBCUs and in MEAC. We, 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 we're penalized. We, we got to get more discipline. So we're going to tremendously have to stop the run. We do know that, but the goal is to stop the run is to score points. Thank you, Coach. Good luck this weekend. Thank you, my man. Coach Sanders, as always, we appreciate your time. Look forward to speaking to you again next week. Appreciate you all. God bless you, brother. Thank you. This concludes our SWAC Football Head Coaches Media Session for Monday, November 14th. We'll get the Zoom recording of this session processed and emailed out momentarily. Thank you for your patience. Have a great day. Thank you, Andrew. Andrew, will you get a breakdown on uh, tiebreakers and things of that nature? Uh, this Absolutely. Week? Absolutely. Yes, sir. All right. Thanks. Well, appreciate it, Doc. Thank, Thank you. you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you.